Hi, I'm Shannon. If you're new to the channel, I'm a Canadian medical student. Every Wednesday, I release short videos with interviews with different medical students, such as today, advice for pre-meds or new medical students, day in the life vlogs. Subscribe to not miss the variety of amazing medical students that I will be talking about. So today, I'm super happy to be introducing my classmate, Brandon. Um, Brandon and I are in the same small group together, so we know each other quite well. Brandon has an interest in pathology and alongside medicine is pursuing a semi-professional career in classical music composition. I thought this was really unique and he will have a lot of interesting things to share. So Brandon, do you want to take us away to your journey um, to how you ended up in medicine, how you ended up pursuing music? I think you're amazing at networking, finding mentorship opportunities, and that's something that uh, a lot of students don't really know how to do. Like, how do they, they, you know, they're interested in, say, pathology, or they're interested in ophthalmology. How do they go find a mentor or their music? Who do they talk to? And they're kind of scared or afraid to look for research opportunities. Um, do you have any thoughts there? Absolutely. In some ways, the cookie cutter science education um, can make students a bit risk averse in, in a sense. And rightfully so. I mean, um, education is costly these days. Um, people are afraid of making a wrong step, um, afraid of making a bad impression. And so I think, um, you know, the main takeaway point from this is that you don't have a lot to lose by asking for things um, and uh, by being keen about various opportunities. And a lot of doors for me, both in, in science and the arts, have really kind of been associated with me going up to the right, whoever the right people happen to be, and uh, kind of just asking for, um, for opportunities to work with them or opportunities to compose something for them or opportunities to do research with them. Um, and, you know, making that part of your plan, like actually just saying, today I'm going to do this, and you do it, and you follow through with talking to your prof um, that you've been kind of scared to talk to or this kind of stuff. Because at the end of the day, um, you're not going to lose a lot by doing that. Mm -hmm. I think the tougher question maybe is what do you want to avoid or what are the, you know, what is the risk appraisal with, with um, these kinds of situations? Because you can do things kind of wrong. Um, and for me, it comes down to two things that I've learned in both, both my kind of trajectories in life. Um, the first one is, uh, trying not to pretend to know stuff you don't, um, especially if you're talking to a lot of people who are experts in their field, um, they will be able to tell if, if you pretend to know certain things you don't know. Um, and of course, in clinical medicine, there's a lot of risk to pretending to think, uh, to know things that you don't know. Mm -hmm. And so kind of being clear on, on what you know and what you don't know, I think is, is an important thing. And, um, and that's definitely something you, you want to approach people with, you know, if you're not a hundred percent sure about what they do, um, then just say, I'm not a hundred percent sure, um, with this. I don't have any experience with this, but I'd love to learn mm -hmm. is, um, I think in, in my mind, the best way to do it, because if you happen, you never know if somebody happens to be an expert in, in something that you want to do. And um, you definitely don't want to be spreading misinformation about things. And so for, for me, um, that I think is one thing that you want to watch out for. And then the other thing um, is to sort of just realize that in, in some ways, everybody's kind of a beginner at what they're doing. And so, um, like I said, you don't, you don't have a lot to, to lose by seeking out new opportunities. And I certainly so want to elaborate a bit more on what you mean by everyone's a beginner. Um, you know, the idea that, uh, well, the nature of research is, it proliferates itself, um, more and more. And we're always discovering things that we don't know. Um, and, uh, and I, I, I really like this, this adage of the more you learn, the less, you know, uh, for certain. And, and so I think many mentors and, and top people in the field do really keep open minds to, with regard to this stuff. And, and they've also been in a situation um, at a certain point where they had to ask for opportunities or for grants or for um, other things as well. So many of them will understand uh, this sort of situation. And don't be afraid also if somebody says, you know, there's no room in my lab right now or, um, 
that could be for for many different reasons so uh just basically keep keep um trying to open your doors for yourself until one does and i've yet to be uh yet to have any issues with that approach i think mm, it's usually just like a gentle let down um this is maybe really yeah. basic but i know this is a question brewing on some people's minds but like how exactly what exactly do you say when you send that email or you go up to them in person i don't have a set formula or way of approaching things other than that you know the attitude of hey i'm new here um i'm really interested in your topic are there any opportunities around in your topic right now? Do you ever find it successful to just talk to them in person? Usually it's not bad. I, I almost always do talk to them in person first, yeah. Unless you can't for some reason and you have to email them. Mm -hmm. um, and in that case, it's just, you know, typical professional emailing protocol. So um, the, probably the tip is try to do, try to approach it first whenever you can. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think so. And so and, and just be yeah. confident, you know, because mm -hmm. if you're in medical school already, or if you're looking for these opportunities, then you're already ahead of, of the people in many ways who aren't looking for them or aren't actively seeking them. Do you have any examples of time you tried to find research in medical school? Several. Uh, uh, I, oh, specifically in medical school? Yeah. I have some musical ones too, but um, mm -hmm. the main one in medical school was uh, I originally, and still am to a certain extent, very, was very interested in radiology. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I think towards the beginning of medical school in October or something like that, I found a, a, somebody who was teaching us radiology and I just walked up and I said, I'm very interested in this specialty. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I've learned some about it, but I certainly don't know a lot. Um, do you know of any research opportunities available for people who are really considering a uh, residency in, in radiology? and uh, she gave me her email and you know so and, and if that person which she uh, obviously didn't if that person just said no I don't know of any opportunities um, and uh, you know that's it basically there's so many more other options you know you all you have to do is look down the radiology department website and uh, you can see tons of opportunities it's an abundance mentality thing realizing that there's always other options if it doesn't go well and uh, but also showing respect for people who have a lot of expertise in something mm -hmm. have been working on it for years. And I feel like from how you do it is no one will get offended that you ask because they're excited that you're, you're interested in radiology or whatever field you're asking for an opportunity for. So if nothing, they'll be thankful, feel a little good that you like their specialty. Then they have to say, no, sorry, I don't have anything. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly right. And you know, sometimes also I've had scenarios where people, um, don't get back to me for a while or just don't, uh, uh, you know, sometimes the email becomes buried and just realizing that these are people too and they get very busy and they have a lot of stuff going on and sometimes they just don't get the chance to reply. Do you have a rule of like following up or just letting it, like when you know the bounce to let it go or try to, um, or just keep trying to follow up on them? Do follow up um, on occasion. I think that the situation that I really dislike the most is, um, because life happens, sometimes you're in touch with somebody and then you just aren't in touch with them for quite a while and you have to send them a message saying, look, I'm sorry, I haven't, you know, been on the radar for two years, um, but things are looking good now. Do you have anything uh, that where you could use some help? Mm -hmm. um, and I, I really still don't like being in that situation, but it's kind of my fault. So... <laughs> um, Normally, yeah, I think, you know, if you just, I use Google Calendar for everything. So if you schedule it in at some point within a month or um, two weeks or something like that, and just say, um, okay, well, you might want to get in touch with these people again. I think, I think that works. And, and just say, you know, I'm still looking for opportunities or, or something, something along those lines. Uh, again, they can't blame you for emailing them. Uh, right, so I think what it's the worst case scenario. Sorry? No, I was going to say what also helps is sometimes the people, they'll tell you when to follow up with them. So you end up like, they're like, hey, you oh. know what? It's crazy. Follow up with me in May or something. And so generally, a lot of some people are really good. Some people are not. But some people will offer that when to follow up with them. Um, so that was kind of everything on mentorship, finding opportunities, kind of being brave to ask for things and uh, realize that it's probably whatever you do, you don't have to overthink it that much. There's no way to do it. Just talk. Um, so next we biggest question I was curious about is 
how you balance this semi-professional career in music composition with medicine. Thank you so much, Brandon, for taking the time to chat. That was cool. I didn't. I felt like I learned a lot about your journey to medical school. I say thanks a lot also for having me on your channel, and it looks like you're doing some pretty cool stuff. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Subscribe to the channel. Like this video if you liked it. Bye, folks.